I usually do my toes every other week so they don't look like this. I like my toes to be fresh and look soft just like you. I don't go to the salon because I'm a skillful girl. I've got all the tools at home. So let me show you the process, how I do this so you can do it too. The cool thing about this is it saves you so much money and it lasts way longer than what the salon will do for you. I promise. And if you're wondering, I went to beauty school. That's right. I paid 15 grand to go to beauty school just so I can beautify myself. And I've always found pampering myself to be so much fun. So let's do it. A dry petty using poly gel. This could last for a month. And before you say using poly gel or acrylics on your toes is extra, duh, that's the point. We want to start off with a nice nail prep. In order to prep the nails, you got to cut the cuticles, you got to trim them, you got to buff all the shine out, we got to dehydrate, we got to push those cuticles back, get them out of the way, and if you want them to look really clean, nip them. I realized that some of the nails were loose, so some of them will be filled in and others will be done from scratch. You can drill your nail bed with an electric drill or you can use a hand drill. I use both. I don't know. It's just, it depends on the surface of the nail and how it's feeling. As soon as I realize that there's some residual product from my last set, I go ahead and use the electric drill. I go back and forth with nipping and filing, and shaping and trimming the natural nail as well as the old gel that needs to be filled in because I want everything to be even. It's so important to do your prep work and have a nice clean canvas to work on. That's what's going to make your set last a month if you need it to. One mistake to avoid is rushing through the prep process and not properly removing the epinechium or the false cuticle before you dehydrate and lay your base down. Toe separators are very helpful, but if you don't have these, don't be afraid to use paper towels that are twisted up or like rayon cotton balls and go over one toe and under the next, like in an S shape to separate the toes. This is your primer. You're gonna need an acid or an acid-free primer, depending on how much oils your body and your nail bed produces. If you get issues with lifting, then you're gonna wanna use acid. And if you don't, then acid-free is just fine. I learned from the Russian girlies over on TikTok to always use a rubber gel base rather than just a normal gel base because it lasts so much longer. It really helps with lifting. Under the LED lamp, you want to cure for 30 seconds. You do not have to go longer. When the base is cured, I apply the poly gel directly on top of my nail bed, and then I use my nail brush and some alcohol to sculpt. Now, you will see advertised um, a slip solution. Slip solution is basically uh, like alcohol, it's going to allow you to shape and mold the poly gel. And you really cannot um, do poly gel without either alcohol or slip solution. But there is zero difference in how it works and alcohol works just fine. So I use alcohol because it's more convenient and I always have it. <laughs> I recommend that you take your time with this step and shape your nails, take as much time as you need to shape them how you need to, and make sure the surface is smooth. That's the thing about poly gel, it's very forgiving. It doesn't cure on you like, what is it? Like, uh, what's the other stuff? Acrylic, yeah. <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> Once you got the shape you like, now you cure it under the lamp. You're gonna need 60 seconds at least. So if it's thick, which I don't recommend putting it on thick, but if it is thick, then um, go longer. Go for 120 seconds. But if you're doing it in nice thin layers, sometimes I only use one layer and, and it's sufficient. Um, then you only need 60 seconds. When you're doing a partial fill like I'm doing, uh, you want to check to make sure 
all the nails look like they were born at the same time. It's important to check the opacity to make sure that they all look like they're the same color. Uh, depending on what kind of gel you're using, I'm using like a glittery, translucent type of red. So it increases, the pigment increases with layers. So it's really important to me that I make sure everything looks like it's completely new and fresh and was born at the same time. Time for some fun facts. Why did I start using poly gel? Well, poly gel is vegan and it doesn't stink. So I can do my nails as often as I need to without inhaling toxins and poisoning my whole family. So <laughs> acrylic is so nice. I love her and I always will, but I just broke up with acrylic because it was so toxic and the odor like I can't get with the odor it's too it's too strong and I also find poly gel to be much stronger than acrylic after this step I shape my nails in like a square shape I love the square because it looks so natural and pretty and consistent and it just makes my toes pop after a 30 second cure of the top coat I wipe off the sticky layer you can always add a second top coat before you wipe off the sticky layer for extra protection and for like a super duper shine. I always go over the poly gel with a cuticle oil afterwards. It just gives my feet that extra healthy glow. Now it's time for the dry pedicure portion of this procedure. <laughs> you might ask, why are you scrubbing your feet after you put the cuticle oil on your toes. And the answer is basically the cuticle oil penetrates so deeply that it leaves a stain glow. So without doing that, I would end up with like really dry, dry toes and feet after I did this part. Even when I go into moisturize, it still would be excessively dry. So that part is to make sure that my toes are still healthy looking and feel good. There is nothing like a good scrub. I feel like after I get a pedicure, whether it's wet or dry, I can walk better. My stride is better. My shoulders are taller and I just feel more balanced. So this is my ultimate favorite part. What I'm scrubbing with is a salt scrub and what you see me take out of this little bowl on the right is uh, a mixture of Himalayan salt, Epsom salt, baking soda, coconut oil, some essential oils, some rose petals. It's just a mixture that I've been building over like the past year and just adding to it. And now I'm just like working it deeply into my feet. And um, after a good rinse, my feet feel so soft and they feel brand new again. And the scrub also helped my hands. Mm -hmm. Helped my hands soften up as well. So I'm winning. Hands and feet, everything. Now we match and everything looks perfectly paired, if you will. I'm just checking to make sure that I got all the dry dead skin off my toes and uh, I like how they look so I'm gonna go ahead and moisturize with some oil and massage my feet again basically but they already look so much better than they did in the beginning I have this um, glow stick by Becca I use it on my shoulders a lot and my arms whenever I'm wearing like a dress or a low cut shirt. And let me tell you, look at this, look at the before picture. Wow. Take some of this cuticle oil and rub it in really, really well. Soften up the feet some more, massage it, just lock that moisture in from that rinse. And that'll take me through the whole entire day. It's a very important step. Oil and moisture and oil and moisture for the feet. I'm so happy with the results and I'm glad to share my foot care tips with you. The products will be in the description. Drop your questions. Thanks for watching. Mwah.